Alright, what's good YouTube? It's your boy show with another video. I mean today we're doing something a little bit uh different. We're gonna be doing the tier list, man. But I want to talk about like it's a tier list of anime tropes. Man, I saw a video basically talking about anime tropes. Not a video, it's a uh like a little social media thing, like, which is the worst anime trope. And they had you pick one. I feel like it was it was kind of hard to do, man. So today we're gonna do a tier list. And uh, you know, I just I hopped on this little tier list website, the tier maker, and it's already got like some stuff set up for us so man we'll go ahead and just get into this and just kind of have a discussion about things now um let's, let's explain the categories first we'll, we'll do this kind of fast because the tier list videos will end up being like mad long so we'll do this kind of fast so um why i love shonen is the max tier kind of corny and campy but i have a spot for it so it's kind of corny kind of overused but you know what i'm saying um it, i'm cool with it i'm used to it uh this is obviously the thing where you love it you love to see it in every anime if done right i like it done wrong i hate it yes it exists it's okay i don't really care for it uh not a fan but it's not a deal breaker and let it die let it die shrivel up and die all right man let's go and get into it all right um i'm gonna try to judge this on as like harshly as possible because i've watched so much anime at this point and i'm just kind of like eh. you know what i'm saying like i don't i don't know let, let's just get into it though let's get into it all right so first one is no stakes whatsoever this is anime like dragon ball z anime basically with no character really dies for good um i would say dragon ball z is definitely the most egregious thing of this like i think uh that's certain other anime that do this but i can't quite recall off the top of my head but at least most of them have like like a character that actually dies and stays dead or something like that but i feel like in, i mean dragon ball z they do have characters but you can definitely tell it's like no stakes it didn't yeah, i feel like um we're gonna put that in not a fan but it's not a deal breaker because i love dragon ball z so self insert insert protagonist i'm is that like a boring protagonist i'm gonna take that as like a boring protagonist thing like a like a character like a protagonist just like you know hey you know, whatever. And if that case, it exists, bro. Uh, protagonist being the born is not a deal breaker for certain anime. Because I like some anime, to me, are based off, like, the villains. The villains and their philosophies. Like, Naruto is a cool protagonist. But his villains are mostly the, the thing I look forward to when I'm watching, like, Naruto. Perverted character, apparently funny. Um, I know exactly where to put this. And and I know you guys are going to gonna hate me for it. But I'm going to put it if done right. I like it. Because, I don't know, like, characters like Mineta is a very hated character, and pervy characters are definitely on the wrong side of things in terms of, like, life. They are definitely on the wrong side of life. But some of those characters are mad funny, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if they're, if they're done right, like, if the humor is kind of, like, not too bad, like, it's not too pervy, and then it'll go all the way through with anything then it's kind of funny, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like Mineta. Um, he's kind of pervy at times and stuff, and it's like, he's kind of funny with it. Uh, I think Issei from High School DHD, the anime kind of calls for it. There's a lot of perverted anime characters that are kind of funny. Like, I don't know, I, I think the stuff with, like, old men kind of, like, hitting on, like, younger women and stuff is kind of crazy, but if you just like Mineta and stuff, they're in the same age, and he's just, like, pervy, it's kind of cool, I guess. All right, older, cool, mental character. This would be characters like Gojo, Kakashi. Everybody's like kind of like stronger and older and cool that they eventually surpass. That's definitely going to why I love Shonen. I love Shonen because they have that kind of big brother aspect. Like, hey, this character is strong. You know what I'm saying? This character is going to teach me. It doesn't necessarily make the character like, I don't know, like, it's just like Ace. Like, every character has this. It's just like Ace. Um, Kisuke Urahara from Bleach. I'm talking about the main Shonen ones because these are, these are Shonen anime list so um they like kisuke and kakashi gojo all of them um giyu from demon slayer that's pretty cool op main character op main character is going into oh uh kind of corny but i have a soft spot i mean obviously it's shown in it's like the main thing is shown in every character is going to get op at a certain point uh i kind of hate op main characters at this point only because i've seen so much of it like like Ichigo being everything in existence, uh, Naruto being born with his demon fox, uh, Itadori being born with special circumstances and stuff, and you know what I'm saying. Like only one I would say that's not like a necessarily OP main character. Actually, no, he is Tanjiro. He has some things with him too. Uh, I think this is just like a 
thing that is normal when it comes to like these type of anime. So I can't really say for sure, you know, that it's it's a bad thing. It's kind of like yeah, it's that soft spot. It's it's in every anime I see. Cute character with no personality. Um, let's go ahead and let it die. Let it die. Let it show love and die. I'm not gonna lie, I am way too deep in all these anime to watch a character that that is like a quote unquote cute character. Cause when I look for an anime, I don't really look to see, oh, this is the cute anime girl. There's nothing wrong with it. Having the waifu and everything, that's that's cool. I'm not saying anything against that at all. But I'm gonna be honest, like characters with no personalities are just trash. Like very, very trash. Like if they don't have personality, like they have, it's gotta be a reason why they don't have personality. Like they're too smart and it kind of kills like social cues and stuff like, um, or you know what I'm saying? They have a specific reason for their personalities. Like, like for me, Todoroki. He's a character I feel like is kind of all to himself. He's a loner, but he has a very sore backstory that makes sense when it comes to stuff like this. Um, the character who's just there to suffer. Um, that's like to me, that's like Yancha. It's like all the characters that never yet never really have a chance to really do anything. They're kind of like the weak, they're just there to, to show how powerful opponents are, I guess. Um, it is this. I, I don't really care for it. I mean, I know it's it's one of the things where it's like, eh. It, it happens sometimes. Rejected childhood love interest. I don't actually know what they mean by that. I'm assuming like, let's say Naruto and Naruto type thing. Like she loved, he loved Naruto. I think because when you're dealing with Shonen and stuff, it's a lot of like young kids. So it's something that is not really prevalent until they grow up or get older. So I guess the love interest thing is like, uh, it is this, it is this. Sad backstory. I think sad backstory is interesting and Speaking from like Naruto, okay, like Naruto, One Piece is probably the only character that doesn't necessarily have a sad, sad backstory. Like, it, at least the way they presented it wasn't just terribly sad. Um, no, no, Luffy kind of had a sad backstory though. They all did actually. Um, Goku kind of did, but he didn't really, he didn't really care. Uh, Luffy's backstory is later on in the anime. Naruto obviously has a sad backstory. Ichigo has a sad backstory. Um, uh, Tanjiro has a sad backstory. I don't really know specifically any any um any sad backstory anime that it just haven't really been good i say i don't know that's kind of that's kind of weird that's kind of weird one because sad backstory is like a staple of shonen like he drives characters who has a happy backstory in in the shonen anime i'm trying to think probably like no i would say one punch man but his world is trash so um we'll just put if it done right then i like it because some sad backstory is just kind of like yeah that's why you're mad like, huh like like i love bakugo as a character but to be honest his story his backstory is not that sad People thought he was great. He had some issues with that, and he was just being a, a dick to Deku all day, all day. The emo depressed character that is like the guy from My Hero, the the crow guy. He's like an emo character. Um, we'll put in assist. I'm not, I'm not too keen on that. The power of friendship, man. I think this category was literally made for it. The power of friendship, kind of corny, obviously, but uh, you know, kind of corny, kind of campy. But I definitely have a soft spot for it because I feel like it, most every anime uses the power of friendship. Now, some of them don't and you know it can cause like very interesting aspects with that but i think the power of friendship is like a normal thing like luffy sees his, his uh crewmates in trouble he powers up ichigo literally powers up if any of his friends are in danger if he has to naruto he sees somebody get hurt he wants to the, the whole anime is trying to bring back a friend and he him powering up because of that um and goku yeah i mean krillin krillin died he went super saiyan so yeah, this is something that's a staple in all shonen. So it's kind of like at this point a soft spot. How are you a 16 year old gang boss? This one is kind of, I feel like this one is kind of specific because I'm the only one I can think of in my head right now. Well, actually, I don't know. Actually, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm thinking about Hitman Reborn and I'm thinking about Tucker Avengers. Both of them is like dealing with young teenagers basically becoming like the head of very illustrious gangs and stuff. So I don't know. Probably, yeah. Eh, it's okay. It's very specific to me, so I'm like, eh. I kind of like when they when they have gangs and stuff and they're young. The Nuri Rise of the Yo Yokai Clan, I think that was kind of one too. He was young. Uh, we'll put that in, in done right. Powerful evil side they can't control. Okay, that is Karama. That is Ichigo. That is Itadori. And from the main shonen I can think of right now, these are the only ones I definitely say. Um, yeah. These these are the ones I, I I for sure say that 
that would be a part of um powerful evil side they can't control i think mm, i think this one's easy for me but i don't want to fill up the category too much um i would gotta say if if i'm thinking about those three i think they were all great parts of it so we'll put kind of corny it ain't like a it ain't like a make a break for me but it is kind of like eh. a practical battle gear that's I'm, I'm guessing it's like fighting in heels and stuff that's like um like fighting with the proper proper equipment it's like improper equipment like how are they fighting with that stuff on i don't really care about it that much magic school magic school i've seen so many of them not a fan but not a deal breaker animal mascot that's interesting i'm i wouldn't say i hate it i just wouldn't say i don't care love triangle love triangle this is interesting yeah this one is this one is kind of hard i'm not gonna lie because i'm not saying that they're, they're let it die let it die it's just i really don't care for them and in most situations i don't really like them i'm trying to think of any major shonen anime i guess the love is that a love triangle i guess it is yeah the, the naruto sasuke and sakura thing yeah actually yeah 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 that's going to let it die it's going to let it die it was like thinking specifically about naruto bleach was a little bit more front forward I always felt like uh, Rukia would end up with Renji. I never really felt that it was like a love triangle to me. Uh, One Piece, Luffy doesn't even have to deal with that. Goku doesn't even have to deal with that. And Naruto, uh, Naruto loves Sakura. Sakura loves Sasuke. Sasuke loves revenge. And uh, I think, you know, and also Hanata loves Naruto. It's kind of like, eh? It, it, to me, it felt like it drove some of the worst plot points in the entire series. Like, sakura saying that she loved naruto like some of the worst decisions were based off that love triangle and i feel like no i'm not feeling it beach episodes um i don't want to say let it die let it die let it shrub up and die but I i'm gonna be truthfully honest with you it's like i'm not like i'm not a specific type of waifu guy i got my favorite female characters and you know what i'm saying and, it, and it's to that waifu level but i don't really care if i see them in necessarily like a beach episode because i feel like beach episodes for me are just so especially depending on what type of it depends on what type of anime it is like this is slice of life i'm i'm super down for a beach episode those are some of the best episodes but if it's like an anime and we just at the beach while like the world's about to be destroyed in the next two episodes nah trying to befriend bef mm, i cannot speak trying to befriend the villain this is something that's an anime staple actually no it's not let's be honest um i guess it kind of is luffy does it he did it with um robin and stuff technically he did it with zoro because he was an enemy he was a pirate hunter so um goku definitely does it it's definitely a trope for sure um natu did it with gajil and all of them he didn't really try to refrain him though he just kind of gajil just got added to the guild but um that's that i know what it's going at i know it's going at uh it's gonna cor corny because i've seen it happen like in every like swear every show but it's it, you know you know what i'm trying to say the angry character <laughs> um okay this this one is kind of like eh because i know where i want to put it at but i, I don't feel so strongly that i want to keep it there i want to put it at wild of shonen because okay what would be the angry character technically zoro will be an angry character because he's you know he's angry at times not like super angry like vegeta and stuff but when they say the angry character they specifically mean like characters that are like they rage or you know what i'm saying like they're mad at certain things all the time i feel like like vegeta and bakugo but I love Vegeta and Bakako. Like, I love those characters, man. Like, because you get to see them a little bitty glimpse of when they're not angry. That makes the, the whole anime better as a result. So, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. I know that's kind of eh. dystopian world. Um, That's like a world where everything is like, like cyberpunky. I don't really care. Honestly, it is just. I'm, I'm not thinking. I'm not I'm blanking on too many anime where that's a thing. Protagonist rage mode. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. Protagonist rage mode is wild old shonen. Naruto's fight against pain. Um, Luffy's fight against Mingo. Uh, Ichigo's fight against any character he ever fought against. Yeah, Aizen. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think and Goku's fight against Frieza. I think any uh, rage moments are like, you know it's going to be a one in anime. You know it's going to be there. You kind of have to have it there like it's just it's nothing else you can really do like you need it you really need it and i feel like it's obvious to me that this is such a a wild little shonen thing it's in every shonen every character rages tanjiro versus the upper moon demons it's such a fantastic trope all right so with that being said the protagonist rage mode that's absolutely a staple 
the sadistic guy. This is I know characters like this. Uh, these are characters that are just sick. They're either they're either characters that are just okay. How do I really explain this? They're either characters that are that are like super sick, I guess, because I think sadistic means what like you like to give out pain. So I don't know if they would consider like Bakugo, because uh you know so they mentioned he was kind of like sadistic a little bit. Um, or characters like Mahito, where they're just like sick like sick guys like they're their guys is like oh my god he needs to be killed so i don't really know um if that's the case we're putting it like that and i'm going to go to it done right you know i also think of characters like jason uh from tokyo ghoul and stuff like just characters that are just just sick individuals or characters that like to just deal out pain you know what i'm saying so um depending on whatever kind of spectrum you want to be with that it is whatever um parents of mia that's a staple um honestly that i don't as so many different anime. I think EGO was the only one that really had an actual dad that was there the whole time. So, um, parents in MIA, that's kind of, that's definitely like a, a soft spot. I feel like that, well, that's mostly everything. Whether they're dead or, you know what I'm saying, whatever situation it is, they're just, they're just not there. I'm going to be the best. Um, yeah, to be honest, that's why I love Shonen. It, it, it may seem corny, it may seem very, very corny at this point, but it's one of the things for me personally where i feel like this is you need this in the show i don't want a character that just wants to be the middleman that's i mean some anime are funny for doing that for sure but you know i like naruto i like naruto specifically because the package of him being the most looked down upon um character in naruto to being hokage you know what i'm saying like that to me is it's sick bro like i'm not gonna lie it's such a very unique not unique that's definitely the wrong word it's like you need to have it. Luffy wants to become Pirate King. And I slowly get to see him become stronger and stronger. And I feel like I become stronger with him. So I know eventually he's gonna reach and be the top. But he declared you know, he declared it, you know, that he was gonna be at the pinnacle of everything. You know, Deku, I'm gonna be the greatest hero. So it, to me I like it. I think it's cool. Comment really characters. Um I know exactly where this one's going at. I'm this this one exactly is going right here. Because that's some comment really characters I cannot stand. That's some characters where there's they're trying to be funny or they're they're trying to be too funny and it's cutting a, a lot of the seriousness out of the show. Uh but some comment relief characters are just amazing. Like I like when they had that best friend that's just kinda like always cutting in, always kinda doing stuff. Um like you know, I mentioned Mineta before, he's kind of a funny comment relief character. He's just a weird little guy, you know what I'm saying? But he you know he's he has his his things in in the show where he has moments where he'd be serious or whatever, but it, it's mostly the fact that like some characters are definitely not done right. Some characters are, are done pretty good. Um main character has hidden power um okay so we we can pretty much say out of the big four technically yeah out of the big three they all have hidden power obviously um originally didn't think that one piece was like that anyway but it technically is he wasn't born with it but it's still kind of the same uh goku uh yeah i guess that's yeah you know what um yeah that's going up here I was gonna say kind of corny and campy, but in reality, I feel like the hidden power and the power ups and stuff between characters and transformations is some of the hypest moments of ever. Uh, when Goku turned Ultra Instinct and shut down everything, this was technically like a main character hidden power type thing. Like, you know, he's stronger than we think type thing. Um, Goku, uh, not Goku, Naruto, Baryan Mode and stuff. That was hidden power. All this stuff is hidden power, and I think it. When you're dealing with the shonen anime, it's like such a mainstream thing that you gotta kind of put it here. This is why I love shonen in general. Yeah. Doing whatever it takes to defeat evil. I don't know what they mean by that. Um, doing whatever it takes. I'm, I'm gonna assume that means like killing. Um, like killing. Uh, I, I don't know. Cause, cause it can mean two different things. And the way, I, the way I'm taking it is like doing whatever is necessary to do to defeat evil. So that means like either going to the dark side or, you know, um, I don't know, because Sasuke was evil when he went evil, so uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm putting it exist. If they mean like killing to stop evil, that's cool, I guess. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that makes some of the best shonens ever when it gets a little dark. Monologues during fight. Monologues during fight. Um, That's definitely going in. If done right, I like it. Done wrong, I hate it. Um, That's going there because, let's be honest, Um, fighting is amazing. Like Some some of the fights from certain seasons and stuff are amazing. Like, uh, for instance, my favorite fight of any new gen anime. Um, Maybe some stuff in Jujutsu Kaisen. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that maybe in like a video a, a little bit later down the line. But 
Demon Slayer Season 2 has my favorite fight over a lot of different enemies. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it is my bar none favorite fight. And that's the fight between uh, Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Tanjiro and Uzumi and stuff. That fight uh, between them and the Upper Moons, I feel like, wouldn't have been as good without dialogue. I'm gonna be honest. I honestly feel like it just wouldn't have been as profound and wouldn't have as much meaning if there wasn't like little stops. Well, I guess monologue is different. Like a monologue is like when they're just talking to themselves, right? And they're talking about like, just, just, I don't even know what monologue means. Hold on. Okay, so it's like a long speech done by like one character. That's cool though. I I'm rocking with that though. I, I feel like it's it happens a lot in anime. And I'm not really, I'm not really tripping. Uh, the we are not so different. This one is rampant. Uh, this one is basically, if we were to put out in long form, this is, I could have become you if I was, you know what I'm saying, raised differently or something, something. Uh, I know where this is going. This is kind of corny, kind of campy, but I have a soft spot for it because it does show you that, like, if you're raised differently from other people, it can, you know, nature versus nurture type thing. It can definitely change your perspective on things in which maybe couldn't drive, but you know what I'm saying? It's like Naruto and Abito. Um, I feel like that one isn't necessarily the best, um, but it is in a way because it, it's, it's always more of, I was a child and you got me at my weakest and the one guy got adopted by a bad guy, like all, like, um, all for one adopted Shigaraki. Um, and the good guy got, you know, he got love from like the right people. So basically it's just like a nature versus nurture thing. So I think it's definitely like a, a staple. It's not really rampant in Bleach and One Piece, but I do see in a lot of different anime, like we're, we're kind of the same. Like I could be a bad guy if I really wanted to, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, I, I think it's cool. Found family. Uh, that's when you make a family with people if you ain't got none. That's everywhere. That's Black Clover. Yeah, that's how I love Shonen. It, it is tropey, found family. Sometimes in anime, that you just go it alone, man. You don't have a family. You don't find a family. And I feel like, I don't know. I feel like with, with, with Bleach, it's a little bit different, though. I don't feel like it's necessarily found family. Because I don't really, I feel like the character interactions are probably the weakest out of all, like, the, the ones besides, like, Goku and his peoples. Because I feel like Ichigo is... A woman army and, and i'm not saying this i don't want to get really too in this because some of these will probably get different videos like expanding on my feelings for certain ones this one might be a a good one to do but i'll leave that one i'll leave that quote for that video on ichigo and his group of friends but i i feel like with naruto um it's prevalent found families like ruka kakashi sasuke and you know sakura and all of them and lee village people you know he didn't have a family so he made one same with luffy uh, he had a family, but the family that he created is his closest people in his entire life. Um, so just to, just to take a stock, we we have quite a few. I, the one we have a lot in right now is the disease, like ones I just I have no particular opinion about. Um, more why I love Shonen ones than I thought it was gonna be. Um, not as much let it die, let it die, let it shrivel up and die ones I thought it was gonna be. I'm not gonna lie, and not a fan of it, but not a deal breaker. It's kind of low too. But man, let's see, let's see. Um, redemption art. Now I take these in two different ways. I guess I feel like well, I guess there's really only one way. Like either a bad guy has become a good guy, or a, a person has done a bad thing and they're trying to redeem from it. Because when I think about redemption art, I think mostly about like endeavor. Like Endeavor did unspeakable things to his family. He was he's a piece of trash, honestly. But the way that my hero handles his art and handles his family trauma is absolutely amazing. I think that's some of the best my hero has to offer. Uh, because you know, I won't spoil it, but his family drama created some bad things. You know what I'm saying? It, it created a lot of resentment and a lot of bad things. And the way that they, they play out his arc is absolutely amazing. Some characters I feel like shouldn't get redemption arcs. Like I'm not saying that Endeavor should. But I'm saying, like, certain characters just do not need redemption arts. Like, I'm, I'm not going to root for this guy whatsoever. I'm not going to root for this girl whatsoever. Like, they're done. So, this is definitely done right, done wrong category. I'm not going to lie. Because I think Endeavor was a, a, a ideal of it done right. Like, his arc, he actually had a redemption arc. You know what I'm saying? So, eh. Christian Inspired. I don't necessarily know what that means. I want to say that Christian Inspired means, like, have I ever seen a Christian Inspired anime? I guess anime were, like... They deal with crosses and demons. No, wait, wait, wait. Maybe. Maybe is that what that means? Like demons and stuff? Like, because isn't... Well, so let's say like Blue Exes, for, for example. That's like a Christian-inspired anime because they got priests and stuff. Uh, Fire Force is also like religion and priests. I wouldn't say Christian-inspired. Like religion-inspired is what I'll go with. And I don't hate religion-inspired anime. It depends on... It's not really my, my thing I look for in anime. So, uh, not a fan, but definitely not a deal-breaker. 
Primary characters, let it die, let it die. Um, okay, um, three can come to mind right now for Crybaby characters. That is Subaru from one, from, not nah, I said One Piece, Subaru from ReZero. Him is kind of, uh, Deku from My Hero and Takamichi from Tucker Avengers. And I gotta say, I love ReZero. I think ReZero is great. I feel like it waned off a little bit in season, in the later seasons, but I love Tucker Avengers, but he, he is probably like the only thing that made me ended up hating it towards like the whole anime though i read the whole manga took your avengers by the way his character made me hate the whole entire thing because uh, to me deku himself he's a crybaby character and it's kind of annoying because it's like sometimes you want deku to be like bro just boss up bro like and obviously in this last like the last couple arts you see deku kind of boss up so it's kind of skewing my sense of what a crybaby character is but gosh i hate this trope so much man it, it ruined the whole took your avengers thing for me uh at least deku kind of found a way to fight himself i feel like Crybaby, the Crybaby Takamichi was terrible, man. I think, I think honestly, probably one of the worst anime characters ever. Seen. I do not like Takamichi at all. I really don't. Uh, I, I honestly just can't stand his character. Subaru kind of grown on me, like although, but even him, it, for him, me specifically, for him and Takamichi, I could definitely understand why they cry. As far as like Deku, Deku is like the worst to cry because a lot of stuff he cries at is just it's like a happy cry, sad cry. He just cries at everything. Um, Takamichi kind of does too, but re, with the ReZero, you can see definitely the tragedies that have to relive a certain moment every single time but my whole thing is that if your power is to rechange events or redo events it's like there's no need to cry at everything like certain, certain events where it's like uh, certain people die and stuff i don't want to really spoil too much then yes you can cry but like i feel like it's just like every single like, I, I don't want to keep getting into it man that's like that's a whole video on itself that we probably get into actually i'll probably make that next week i'm not gonna lie I want to talk a lot more about crybaby heroes and anime traditional japanese influences so that's like samurai and, and ninja and stuff uh, yeah we, i know i think it's simple that's really nothing really much to talk about with this that's what i take from it like traditional japanese inf influences i i'm i'm guessing like samurai or like i, I don't really i mean naruto is like a ninja show shinigami for like bleach and stuff yeah i mean it's it's, it's kind of like a trope it's kind of like a stable at this point it's not really a trope in my opinion announcing attacks this is an amazing right here this is amazing announcing attacks um i want to put it if done right then yes but i'm not gonna lie i feel like i you know what you know what actually we're gonna put that can i forget we're gonna put that here maybe let's see i feel like announcing attacks is some of the coolest like things ever like it can be cool when you have a character just mute and just beating somebody down but i don't know when you have like that music blaring and then you hear that frost and sure again or you hear that um monkey you know what i'm saying like you hear that it's such a cool thing like coming my like come here how you know it's like that is such a cool thing like gum gum like that is such a cool thing i think that's definitely something i love and showing that like I, I really can't get enough of like Bankai. you know it's a transformation it's not an attack but still uh yeah yeah uh training montages training montages are a staple um that's definitely a done right nah, actually no 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 no. i feel like a lot of staple ones i feel like i want to put here because it's staple because i have a soft spot for it uh i like i like training montages uh ichigo his his mini training montages to reach uh bankai uh i don't did luffy yeah luffy had training montages he had a uh, his time skip training and all that and naruto training on mount miyaboku goku doing a lot of training too it's just a staple like at least one i don't i don't necessarily feel like it's kind of corny or campy but i don't necessarily feel like it's like the main reason why i love shonen like a big reason of shonen so and i think they're done pretty much the same in me for their episodes this was hard for me because i feel like a lot of people expect me to put it and let it die let it die let it triple and die but i don't know i wouldn't say filler episodes are the worst actually yeah what am i doing let me stop trying to be contrarian. Filler episodes suck. Um, not all of them do, do, do. Some filler episodes I do kind of like. the like certain filler episodes where it's like, I got no more Naruto. So I might go back and watch like fillers and something just to pass the time. A lot of them suck. Some of them are really cool. But the fact that they just really don't count. They don't mesh well with the original um, work. The original content. It's kind of like, yeah, it's pointless. So, yeah. Unique power system. Obviously, that is that even a like a bad trope i guess some of these aren't really bad tropes but that's obviously why i love shonen hunter is hunter fire um naruto ninja 2 kind of fire 
uh, rate to spiritual energy and how they use that and apply that. That's pretty cool. Um, Devil Fruits, cool. Uh, this was this is what makes an anime. Without a unique power system, I feel like you can't have a good anime. Um, curses and techniques and stuff like that. Uh, the breathing techniques for Demon Slayer. This is some of the best stuff that is is ever touched on in military setting. I don't remember a lot of military setting anime to be honest. Uh, I know there's some, and I know there's a lot. Um, I think like Gate One, I guess you consider. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it. It exists. It has nothing to do with me. It is just exist. Flashback art. Now the way that they did this, um, yeah. No, this is hard. Yeah, this is hard because flashback art, flashbacks. This doesn't count. Obviously, it's an art. It's his art, so it doesn't count in terms of um like the flashbacks in the middle of fights like Naruto is egregious of. But this is more like when we got to see how Chakra was made in Naruto, or this arc where you get the flashback and see Kakashi, see what Kakashi's been through. And I feel like for me, this is an easy choice. I feel like flashback arts are some of the best content ever because with flashback arcs, you get to see certain characters, backstories, and how they came about uh, right now. And like the, well, not right now, but we just went through the, uh, the Gojo arc. You see how Gojo became Gojo. And it's some of the best arcs because it's not like necessarily the best arc in the entire show because it can't be. It's a flashback. It just, uh, to me, I don't think there's no flashback arc that can be better than the main content because the main content is why you want to know more about these people. But I feel like it's always such a solid arc and we definitely need it for um, information and stuff. And those arcs tend to blow things wide open. They tend to give us a lot of information. And they tend to be highly rewatchable because they give us a lot of information. So uh, thinking about like specifically like Naruto or like in the in Bleach that just had a recent flashback art where they just show how Ichigo's uh, heritage went about, and and that's that in itself is really cool. I like those tournament arc. Definitely an anime trope. Definitely Wild of Shonen. Uh, the Hunter Zam, the Chunin Zams, Dark Tournament, um, Tournament of Power. These are some of the the absolute most peak anime seasons and arcs that there is. The uh, spring tournament thing for My Hero. These are some of like the most peak arcs in all of anime. I'm not gonna lie. Tournament arcs are so good. You get to see all the characters go up against each other. You get to see them being strong. Um, it, it's it's amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Every turn, every anime needs a tournament arc. Every long run anime needs a tournament arc, in my opinion. If they can do it right though. I feel like yeah, I want to put it if done right, but I don't think I've done a seen a turn a tournament arc of anime I'm interested in that's done wrong. So I don't know. Obligatory Sundere. So basically that character that is always beating up on the main character and stuff. And I'm not necessarily a fan. I'm not gonna lie. I like I like Sundere's. Mm, but I feel like a lot of anime just don't do them necessarily right. And I feel like I'm not like a huge fan of them trying to force a Sundere in there. They always intend to force a Sunder in there somehow. Like Nara, like like Sakura will be a Sunder. Like Ruki will be a Sunder. And I think they're cool characters, and they they do add a lot. But I don't. I, I wouldn't say I would stop. I would drop a show to actually not watch it no more. The one <laughs> smart ass with glasses. So I'm thinking like, okay, so the, the smart character, what comes to mind right now is Tenya Ida from. I, I like Ida's character. I think he's funny. I think it's, it's like a funny thing. Basically, a generic guy that knows everything. He has the glasses and stuff. Eh, it's whatever. It exists. It definitely exists. Harem. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I want to put it here, but I want to put it here. And I feel like I'm gonna put it here. Because I feel like if it's, if it's even thoughts on me putting it here, maybe it needs to be here. Because I feel like Harem anime, and I don't want to spend too long on this. Because I like the idea of a lot of these being made to videos. If you guys want to see videos on any one of these, just let me know. Like deeper in depth videos. I talk about it stuff with the pictures and everything. I think. I think harem anime are done for me. Uh, I think when I was growing up and I was watching anime, like right now there's the isekai genre and that's like the big the big wave. And it's been the big wave for a long time at this point uh, where, you know, you have a character that dies and goes to another world. And da, 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 da. But I feel like back then there was an abundance, a great abundance of harem anime. I hate harem anime now because I've seen so many. I just do not care for them now. Harem anime is the same, the same thing as like a love triangle. I guess the love triangle is different because one character loves this character, this character loves this character, this character loves this character. And I guess that's that's also icky because it's down there too. But harem anime is mostly like all of these people love one character. Harem could be done good. Uh, I think Nisei Koi was a really good one. Um, any harem anime where they end up choosing is good. But I feel like anime in general, they have this issue where they don't necessarily choose who they like until like either the very end of the show or they never do. And I feel like that ruins a lot of harem for me because you watch them to see if they're going to choose and they either choose like the one you don't like which is pretty much guaranteed to happen depending on how many girls is there 
Like, specifically when the Harriman enemy, you can kind of call who it is that's going to be picked. Most of the time. They try to switch it up sometimes, but you can kind of call who's going to be picked. But with a lot of harem, it just no, it just never really goes anywhere. Especially if you're watching anime, you don't read the manga, you don't really even know what happened to the end of the story. So, yeah, that that's there for me. Fan service with no purpose. Yes, it absolutely ruins anime. I think this. I think to me, I think they're missing one that they didn't put up here that I would have put, which is um the uh, I saw it on the pictures like a thousand like the one was like the girls that are a thousand years old but like children. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Fan service with no per no purpose is the worst. Um, I'm all for fan service, man. I'm all for fan service. But my whole issue is that like the the most egregious person that does this is from Fire Force. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Fire Force. That is the most egregious anime with with dealing with stuff like this. Um, they make a character literally just trip for no reason at all, and I feel like it. I feel like Fire Force has a amazing anime in there, and to have that in there ruins it so much that I couldn't even recommend it to people. It's su it's such a deal breaker for me. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's such a deal breaker for me. Like like just seeing it in there for no apparent reason. Like sometimes it could be funny. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's meant to be funny, it's meant to be funny. But I feel like I'm, I can only think of Fire Force at the moment, and then Fire Force it, it takes me out of the show so much because they do it in battle scenes, they do it in like very important battle scenes, and it just kills it for me. <laughs> half human, have something. Um, I guess it done right, right? What do I think? Are the big ones not too technically? No, actually, not so's not. We'll get into that. Um, Ichigo, obviously. Uh, Narcissus human. Porzo's not. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't really care. I don't really care for it. Uh, honestly, it's, it's whatever. It's not really like a major trope. They have human, have demon and stuff. Have human, have vampire. It's cool. If they, if they do all right and they, they do it to where it's interesting enough, I'm, I'm cool with that. Daddy or mommy issues. And we are at the last one. Daddy or mommy issues. I don't really, I guess I don't really know what they mean by that. Like, parents left them, but parents MIA and they're sad because they, I guess like, okay, let's see, like Shikaraki would have daddy and mommy issues because he hated his dad and stuff and his mom, he killed his mom and stuff. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it exists. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever. All right. Um, finally, that was a huge undertaking. We were finally done. I'm not gonna lie. I want to make a video on a lot of these anime tropes. A lot of them, and I definitely will be doing that. And I want you guys to come through. If you made it to the end of this video, I applaud you because I probably almost didn't mix it in this video. Uh, I think that a lot of these are really good. I feel like it's a really good tier list. Some of this stuff I kind of wouldn't have even thought of, and some of this stuff I feel like I know was what was left off. But with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Bless, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next video.